All right, guys, so you know how a couple weeks ago I made a video about the Formula One 2024 season, which will not even be close. Well, despite that, I've actually been hearing a lot from a bunch of Formula One fans who have been saying that Red Bull and Max Verstappen's domination might finally come to an end. <laughs> These fans have pointed out Ferrari's strengths over the season break, despite Carlos, who is going to be thrown out of their garage after 2024, Mercedes willing to give one final awesome year for Lewis, McLaren cooking up a car that might finally give Lando Norris a win, which should be impossible, and Aston Martin once again possibly making a banger of a car for Fernando. So maybe it's about time that Red Bull's domination came to an end. And with that, let's take a look at preseason testing. Verstappen had the fastest time of the day with a 1 minute 31, 3, 4, 4. Okay, never mind. I would love to congratulate Max on his fourth championship. But anyways, this video will cover why Formula 1 was over before it even began, the average Formula 1 fans' delusions and giving them a reality check, and what to expect in 2024 and even 2025. I am going to be explaining all of these things to the best of my ability, but in reality, I'm probably gonna end up explaining things in the stupidest way possible. Now I really hate to say this because I really hoped for 2024 to be an exciting season in Formula 1, but damn man, it's actually looking like the rest of the grid is literally done for. They're cooked. Now I know I made a video telling everyone that Max is probably gonna end up winning by a long shot in 2024, but at least let there be more competition, man. Like Red Bull literally unveiled their RB20 and it looks exactly the same like the past eight f***ing years. But if you pay closer attention, they took Mercedes's concept of zero pods and are actually making it work. That's how you know that the rest of the grid is finished and this year's F1 season already came to a conclusion before we even touched Bahrain. And by the way, this video is being made before Bahrain. I don't even know the result of the race yet, but if you're watching this after the race and let's say Max won by a landslide, then this video is gonna be the biggest f*** you, I told you so. Because Max isn't losing a race unless it's due to reliability or something out of his control. I, I kinda just realized that it would be really embarrassing to say that if Max didn't win. But besides that, if we're comparing teams to stakes, Red Bull has served a stake that's from medium rare to well done while the rest of the grid serves congratulations. And why am I saying this? Well, here's a quick recap of F1's preseason testing a week before the first GP. So Logan Sargent was first, as in first to spin in the season. You know, it's really interesting to know that this guy has not lost his form over the break. Ferrari's list of rivals has grown as it is no longer Red Bull and themselves, but now we have a new addition to the list, which are drain covers, as Charles Leclerc went over one and completely damaged his floor. If I had a world championship every time a Ferrari went over a drain cover, I'd be Fernando Alonso since that shit happened twice. Charles Leclerc was also able to pull off banger laps and so did Carlos Sainz, which means that Ferrari may be in competitive form in 2024, but the thing is, even if they are, their biggest rival is still themselves. So even if they make a 15 second gap for the lead, Ferrari's pit crew is probably going to end up doing a 15 second pit stop, throwing away every single opportunity to win. And if you do not believe me, this is literally what Charles Leclerc looked like in his first season of Drive to Survive. You can actually see light in his eyes and he actually looks like he's fleeting joy. And then fast forward five years later, my guy just straight up looks traumatized. Like, I don't think Charles even has the energy to get mad anymore. Bro probably sounds like this after Ferrari screws up his strategy again and again. Man, I'm gonna... I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear! Anyways, Lewis Hamilton did cheeky maneuvers in the last day of testing, further solidifying that Mercedes is ready to prepare for a fight. But instead, Lewis did those moves on Kevin Magnussen, which means that Mercedes will probably still put up a fight, but likely against Haas at the back of the grid. Speaking about Kevin Magnussen, he was seen hammering something in his car, further solidifying another fact, which is that Haas is probably too broke that their driver is a part-time mechanic as well. But the highlight of testing was on day one where Max Verstappen overtook Charles Leclerc in testing and set up the fastest lap of the race by 1.1 seconds. 
At this point, this is what the rest of the Formula 1 season would probably look like. Finally, we are in the 2024 Bahrain Grand Prix and it's lights out and away we go. Max Verstappen is champion of the world already and wins with a two minute gap over Charles Leclerc while watching an episode of Drive to Survive on his car. Now I do want to clarify that even with all of this looking bad for non-Red Bull fans, as of the making of this video, it's only testing. You know, what we can see from testing though is that Ferrari definitely have some solid pace and good drivers that can unlock the potential of the car. Even if they sometimes, you know, end up sending it straight into the wall. Yes, I am talking about you, Charles. But realistically, they might be the only team that has a solid chance against ruining Red Bull's perfect season as they already did that in 2023. As for Mercedes, okay, I kind of forgot they existed until somebody pointed it out like genuinely my mind is already set to the fact that lewis is in ferrari so theoretically that's like 70 percent of mercedes fans disappearing out of thin air mclaren seems to be doing all right we can't really tell from this state and aston martin as well although me being you know a fernando alonso fan would love to say that he might have a shot at his 33rd win this year um to all the fernando alonso fans please do not listen to me i am extremely delusional Anyway, speaking about delusions, this is the next thing that I've been dying to talk about, and it's something called preseason delusions. If you don't know what preseason delusions are, it's a mindset that's pretty much an infection, and it's spreading like the plague. Every single year, there are more and more Formula One fans that have high hopes for their teams until Max Verstappen decides to play the Dutch national anthem every week. So what actually ends up happening is that Red Bull fans become extremely happy, and non-Red Bull fans start crying, especially when their favorite driver loses pole position right after turn one. Now with Red Bull's likelihood of completely dominating 2024 and maybe the years ahead since Adrian Newey is still on their team and Max Verstappen is a racing robot, I am beyond surprised that there are still fans who are still saying this year will be our year. Especially the Ferrari fans who have been saying that shit since 2009 only to be completely edged out of a championship multiple times in a row. And to all the Ferrari fans out there, the Scuderia might have a chance at snatching a few wins from Max Verstappen and Red Bull, but to win the championship, that sh is gonna take a while. So just as a quick reality check for every deluded Formula One fan base, and I know this is ruining your fun since it's fun to be delusional sometimes, but trust me guys, I'm doing this for your own good and my own as well since I'm guilty of the same thing. So this is a fast reality check for us to stop this delusional behavior before we turn into brain dead monkeys, or in other words, Lance Troll by 2026. Not a Ferrari fan. Everybody's a Ferrari fan. Even if they're not they are Ferrari fan. Even if you go to the Mercedes guys, even if they say that, oh yeah, Mercedes is the greatest brand in the world, they are Ferrari fans. All right, so first up, we have the Ferrari fans. For the last fucking time, this year is not gonna be your year, and if it is, you probably already jinxed it by now. I personally love Ferrari, I think everybody's a Ferrari fan, but the team is just addicted to fumbling. Like, keep in mind that no matter how good the car is, the team will always find a way to mess it up. Like posting a four second pit stop, calling it poetry in motion, where a more suitable caption would probably probably be poetry in slow motion since the front left tire took seven business days to be put on. Aston Martin fans are pretty much Alonso fans. I have never met a single Lance Troll fan because they simply do not exist. But anyways, I hate to break it to you guys, including myself, but Fernando isn't grabbing the championship anytime soon. I mean, he even said it himself, and I quote, I think 19 drivers in the paddock now think that they will not win the championship. And this is right after testing. So perfectly understandable, Fernando. Have a great day. McLaren fans are next, and you guys are probably some of the most optimistic ones out there instead of delusional, so I'm gonna be real here. McLaren might have solid pace this year, but challenging the title, it's honestly just gonna take a miracle. Like, in order for McLaren to win the championship, Zach Brown, love him by the way, he's a great guy, he would have to sit on Max Verstappen's Red Bull, slowing it down just enough for Lando and Oscar to take the lead of the race. That is if they're even P2 and P3. Like, if McLaren pulls off a 2023 season start again, then it's officially over over. Okay, so now we have the Merc fans. Oh boy, I swear some of you guys are either the most brutally pessimistic people on the planet, consistently shitting on the car 24-7, or extremely delusional. There is literally no in-between, it's hilarious. Anyways, I just hope for the best for you guys. It seems that the majority of Mercedes fans are slowly losing their sanity the longer they see their car on track, but just expect the worst so you won't ever be disappointed.
And finally, Red Bull fans. Man, I don't even know why the hell I'm mentioning you guys. Like, just be delusional as much as you want. Max already won pretty much every race. So overall, this brings us to the conclusion, what should we expect from this year and maybe the next years to come of Formula 1? Well, 2024 is pretty much a filler season that Max Verstappen already won, and if somebody else does, then that's literally just awesome. I do not give a sh**. This season is pretty much just a side quest where we have to complete a task called listening to the Dutch national anthem 24 times in a row. But of course, I'm still gonna watch it since it's probably the only source of solid entertainment that I have despite Formula 1 shattering my mental health every now and then. I do want to reiterate that the things covered in this video from preseason testing to the preseason delusions may not be 100% accurate. Maybe some of your delusions may come to fruition and Ferrari might put up a strong fight against Max and Red Bull. But based on how everything else went the past couple of months, F1 is already over before we even get to Bahrain. Like all the other teams, they're raw meat and Red Bull is the chef. They are cooked. I am literally willing to make a bet that if Max Verstappen does not win the 2024 season or the majority of F1 races, especially Bahrain without losing due to an engine problem or something out of his control, like if he loses in his Red Bull due to a lack of pace, I would bet to chop my balls off. That's the last rubber band I had up! Like, that is literally how confident I am that Max is going to strike everyone down in 2024, despite me being, you know, the biggest Alonzo Glazer known to man. But despite that, as we finally head into 2025, then we might see bigger and even badder events as Ferrari will finally have Lewis and a bunch of other driver transfers as well are going to be happening. Carlos might go to Mercedes, maybe Fernando, and Alex Albon has a whole journey ahead of him. But the biggest change that we are probably going to be expecting as soon as the competition gets closer in 2025 is that we're going to end up hearing the Dutch national anthem 15 times instead of 24. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>